Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Order Talk is Mystery. This will be part 386. We're continuing with our lesson titled, Reality Transit. This will be part 5. Scripture indicates, Reality Transit would be characterized by the release of the darkness element, which would affect the functioning of the creation and a darkness which would affect the minds of its inhabitants. Afterward, at the second coming or the last coming, this darkness would be dispelled by the Lord's great light, the light of the saints, and the light of the great central sun. So what we find here, scripture, prophecy, teaches a time to come when a darkness would envelop the earth and its inhabitants and out of this darkness would be a special darkness that would begin to develop the minds of the inhabitants of the earth. We see this taking place already with the erratic behavior of people, the seemingly inconsistent reasoning of people. It basically can be attributed to this specific uh, contact that they're making with this darkness element. Turn to Isaiah 60th chapter verse 1 to 2. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For, behold, the darkness, the word darkness is hosek, which you read in Genesis, the first chapter. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness. So this is a darkness which comes from the hosek. It's a special aspect of this darkness that affects the minds of people. Gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So we find characteristic of the end time, the time that is called the day of the Lord, this darkness is going to begin to affect the, the state of existence of man, to a greater and greater degree. The ones that will not be affected by it, unless they allow it, will be those whose names are in the book of life mm. because they have the spirit within them. They have light. Others will be suspect, subject to it to varying degrees. Is this the first time that humans have encountered gross darkness? Or? No. Because I'm thinking about YHVH using it against the Egyptians and the Egyptians were terrified. They couldn't move. Well, that was, that was darkness, yes. Not gross, that wasn't gross darkness. That wasn't gross okay. darkness. Gross darkness would be more like Genesis 6, where the mind of man is so affected that everything he does is only evil continually. Okay. It's a darkness of judgment. Now, Scripture indicates you can tell this darkness the onset of this darkness <clears throat> by the imposition of lies replacing truth, right. neutralizing truth, and the readily acceptance of a pseudo, of a lie, and the rejection of truth. This is done by the mentalities that are accepting the gross darkness. In other words, they're becoming functions of <coughs> functionaries of the gross darkness. <clears throat> and scripture lets us know that they love this darkness. They find comfort in this darkness. <clears throat> but by their being drawn to the and embracing the darkness, they are engineering their own judgment. 
Mr. Jones. Yes, sir. You, what, it, it sounds as if they have resigned to accept the darkness as a part of their life. Instead of wanting out of it, they are they embrace readily, it. They're embracing it, yes. Yes, exactly. Well, you see that all around. But that's because they don't know that there's something to want out of, because their belief is this is normal. No. Hmm. They make a decision. They don't, they're not going to be able to skate away with that excuse. Right. Conscience. Oh. Conscience stands against this type of darkness. <clears throat> when you decide that you are going to sear your conscience and accept the darkness, you make a rationale, a justification of doing evil that you originally knew was you, okay. good. Okay. Okay, so and you stand in judgment. It sounds as if they know it's not something they need nor should, but out of convenience, they instead of fighting against it, they, they embrace it. Yeah, well, they, they embrace the satility of it because it's pleasant. They yeah. accept it because it is something that they are drawn to, that they feel comfort in. Remember, they don't have the spirit. So you're saying gross darkness is comfortable for them? Sure. Because of the allurement. Sure. Uh, turn to the Gospel of John. It's not really comfortable, but it looks comfortable. Well, no, it's, it's, it is comfortable to them. Hmm. Where we go? The Gospel of John. Let's try the third chapter. It talks about that. John, the third chapter. Verse 19. It's 20. Mm. Actually, we're going down to 21. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than yes. light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, made manifest that they are wrought in God. So you have these, these people love right. darkness. So the decision has been made and the darkness as they see it is now their cover. So I understand what you're yes. saying. Yes, they see their conscience. Yes. And then any barrier to just total uh, immersion in this light is gone. Mm. Of course, you're going to have it to different degrees in different people. Yes. But uh, ultimately, the time of the tribulation period, we see those that do not have their names in the book of life are totally corrupted. Right. Yes. So is it fair to assume that the, these men that are loving the light, or loving the darkness, they have no religion at all? They don't, they don't have a God? No. No. The God is Satan. They embrace the dark side. Everything that is not of God is what they embrace. But when you say they don't have a God, they're worshiping Satan. Yes, I'm saying they, they, they he, actively he's, worship. Yeah, but he's he not, we're God. not talking about God. No, of course not. We're talking about evil right. that uh, is personified as the center of their, yeah, their whole being. Okay. Uh, you look at our leaders, mm. they're, to they're totally yielded to the dark, dark side. Lucy says she's a, a reptilian, <laughs> a cold-blooded <laughs> reptilian. For that, <laughs> by their works. <clears throat> now, Isaiah fifth chapter, verse twenty to twenty-three.
Law unto them that call evil good, and good evil. That put darkness for light, and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. In verse 21 now. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Uh, so we see this happening wholesale in our society. The leadership is lined up, uh, uh, squared up with this condition. They're embracing darkness. They are uh, rejecting light and anybody of light. They're trying to snuff out truth. They want uh, lies to be received as though it were truth. And anything that stands in the way that's considered a threat, they're going to try to eliminate. So what we find that the leadership is taking down everything that is oriented by God in society. Now, Scripture teaches those of darkness will torment those of light from this point on into the tribulation period. Mark, the 13th chapter, verses 12 to 13. Now, the brother shall destroy the brother, shall betray the brother to death, and the father of the son and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. What is this talking about? It's talking about a time when wholesale darkness settles on the earth and it divides. We hit on our last lesson. We said there'd be a division between those whose names are in the book of life and those whose names are not. Those whose names are not will embrace the dark side and turn on those who are of the light. Try to wipe them out, destroy them. It goes all the way down to families, uh, countries, cultural groups, language groups, families against each other. Anything that is of light will be thoroughly and totally uh, brought to a point where it will be considered worthy of destruction by those of darkness. So should we understand that <coughs> after the beginning, sorry, those who are not saved and therefore will never be saved have reached a point in terms of the darkness intensity where they can no longer look at it objectively. Oh, sure. They're totally caught up with subjectivity. Mm. Uh, it would be akin to somebody who is a paranoid schizophrenic. That's the, the mindset of society. Now notice what it says in verse 13. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be delivered. So the Lord is telling us the signs so that we have an understanding and we can see it for what it is. We are in a society. It doesn't matter who wins the election. No. The society is going over to the dark side. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to be a question of greater and greater intensity in society to the point where the judgment is pronounced. Beginning of sorrows. 
which leads us to the next principle. Brother Richards? Yes. The, um, where it says, um, Uh, but he that shall endure unto the end, that's not talking about the tribulation, though, is it? Yes. It's leading into the tribulation. It's talking about whatever era you are in. From, from now on, you're going to be faced with opposition by people who are immersed in darkness. Those of light are going to be given the mandate to withstand those of darkness. The only thing you can do is stand against them in the strength of the Lord, not our own strength. Light will always overcome darkness. What they're going to try to do is to get those of darkness, uh, those of light to become those of darkness. When you stand in Christ, you remain a person of light no matter what your circumstance is. And God promises ultimate deliverance out of that situation. The first deliverance will be the gathering. The second deliverance will be the rapture. The third deliverance will be the coming of the Lord to set up the kingdom. So you're looking at three, we've been talking about the three different uh, situations that are going to take place. We said the Lord would manifest four times. <clears throat> the first time would be the judgment. The second time would be the gathering. The third time would be the rapture. The fourth time would be his coming to set up his kingdom. In each one of these times, darkness is going to try to stand against those of light. Now the current group that is of light <coughs> isn't going to be here for the second intercession of the Lord. They're going to be taken out of the picture. You're going to have different groups that are going to be called upon to stand against the darkness element. Where we are now <clears throat> we're being prepared for the beginning of sorrows. We have a battle taking place. You're going to have opposition by people who are in darkness who want to get you to reject your light and become darkness in a million different ways. The Lord tells us to stand firm in who we are. We're in Christ. And he will deliver us ultimately. But if a person uh, compromises his position, he'll go into darkness. Let's go on. We see more about this <coughs> in a later <coughs> lesson. Scripture indicates the circumstances will force those of light to separate from those of darkness. I'm going to repeat that. Scripture indicates circumstances will force those of light to separate from those of darkness and ultimately be <clears throat> joined together. So everyone of light is going to fellowship with those of light. They're going to separate from those of darkness. Ezekiel, the seventh chapter, verses 16 to 18. We see examples of this. Now we see in Ezekiel 7, judgment has come on the land. <clears throat> the land has been destroyed. Tremendous uh, suffering from the four corners of the land. But we find in verse 16, there is a gathering of people who have light. Verse 16, but they that escape of them shall escape and shall be on the mountains as doves of the valleys. All of them mourning everyone for his iniquity. In other words, a judgment will fall those who have not been totally committed to the Lord are going to be allowed to escape to the mountains. They will gather among themselves as a group. And it talks about they shall also gird themselves with sackcloth 
and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon all their heads. In other words, you're going to have Christians who have not been prepared, they've not been ready for this. They experience this judgment, but they're allowed to escape to the mountains so that they can repent, they can gather themselves together, and ultimately they're going to be martyred. <clears throat> but there's going to be a division between those of light and those of darkness. Because those of darkness will seek to destroy those of light. He said, you'll be hated of all men for my name's sake. There'll be no safety in a person. I don't care if it's a family member. If that person is in darkness, they're going to try to destroy you. The only safety that these Christians are going to have is in fellowshipping with other Christians of light. They're going to get together in groups. For protection and for safety. Revelation 15, verse 2. They come up to heaven in the groups that they experience life with on earth. Revelation 15, verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they, they, so they are a group. They sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. So they come out of the tribulation period as a group. Why? Because they lived on earth as a group. They were all of light. Turn to Revelation, the seventh chapter. You see the same thing. Verse 9. After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Drop down to verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these in which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They come out as a group. They are martyred as a group on a global scale. They come up to heaven as a group. All those who are of light are going to separate from all those who are of darkness on earth. <coughs> And in heaven, whatever group you separate into, that's going to be the group you're going to be part of for eternity. That's why it pays to go in the rapture, because that's the highest group. Turn to Romans, the eighth chapter. This, this is the highest group of those of light that there will ever be. Romans 8, 16 to 17. 
The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. What's the difference between this group and the other two groups that we saw? Okay. No. Okay. But that, yeah, that's the main Not ultimate right. difference. But the main difference is they come together now. Okay. They're a group now. They've come out of darkness. They have dedicated their lives totally to the Lord. So the light that is in them is going to be the greatest light of any other group. It's going to be the light of glory. God is going to take this group and he's going to showcase them above all the other groups. Everybody has this choice. They can do it now or they can do it later. But they're going to do it if they are ever going to remain in God's kingdom. Mm. So they're doing it later is allowing the circumstances to come even though they know what the circumstances are now. Yes, you can tell. You know who's in darkness and who's not. Mm -hmm. And the scripture's telling us when you see these things happening, understand it's the beginning of what's going to take place leading to the tribulation period, which is the worst time that will ever be uh, anywhere. Mm -hmm. But let's go on. Scripture teaches the era of global judgment to the Lord's coming is called the day of the Lord or the Lord's day. In other words, from the beginning of sorrows to the second coming is called the day of the Lord or the Lord's day. That's the main focus of the book of Revelation. Turn to Revelation, the first chapter, verse 10. Revelation, the first chapter, verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. John is taken from his time to the period called the day of the Lord. Our time. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So he goes from the future into eternity. But on the Lord's day, Everything that he's writing is that period of time. Now the Bible tells us the main characteristic of the day of the Lord will be the onset of darkness. I'm going to repeat that. The main characteristic of the day of the Lord will be the onset of darkness enveloping the earth and all the inhabitants. You're going to have a physical darkness you're going to have a spiritual darkness. It will be the main characteristic of the day of the Lord. We're going to read some scripture that talks about that. Turn to Zephaniah. No, excuse me, turn to Amos first. Amos, fifth chapter, verse 18 to 20. The Lord here is describing what the day of the Lord will be like to those that experience it. Verse 
Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? In other words, how is it going to benefit you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him, so shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. What is he talking about? He's talking about a time in which those that are in the world at this time are going to experience darkness. Not, well, there's a blackness that's darkness, but they're going to experience what's called obscurity darkness. They are not going to be able to focus in a progressive understanding of things because everything is going to be obscure. Everything is going to be confusing. Everything is going to be set against people because the enemy is dominating the earth at this time with his darkness element. And the focus of his darkness element is control. So the scripture is telling us, be prepared for the day of the Lord is going to be a day of physical and spiritual darkness to come on those who are not prepared. The only ones that are going to be prepared are those that have the Holy Spirit in them, the light in them, will enable them to understand and comprehend and be directed. Everybody else is going to be in a state of confusion. Let's go on. Zephaniah, first chapter, verse 14 to 18. Zephaniah, first chapter, 14 to 18. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteneth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and the alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. So he's talking about the characteristic, again, of the day, the day that we're entering into, which will begin with the great judgment beginning of sorrows, the gathering, tribulation period, second coming. All that is characterized by darkness. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture teaches those who are of the darkness will be removed from the earth by those who are of the light. Ultimately, the darkness of the day of the Lord is going to be dispelled by those of light. Malachi, fourth chapter, verses one to three. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name, in other words, he's talking about those of light, shall the sun, S-U-N, 
of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Now what is he talking about here? He's talking about light is going to dominate all things. The light of the saints in a great light which basically is a great central sun will light up this world seven times brighter than it already is. The world is going to be bathed in light and anything of darkness will not survive. It is going to be burnt up. Notice what it says in verse 3. You shall tread down the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this saith the Lord of hosts. So the day of the Lord is a prolonged period of darkness on the earth. At the end, the Lord and the sons of light come and they burn up everything that is of darkness and send it into eternity, into the torment regions. And from that point on, there will never again be a darkness on this world. It's forever going to be bathed in light you won't have a day night cycle you're going to have a totally day cycle continuously it's just going to be intensity of light the light will start off on a certain level and it will increase in brightness and then it will <clears throat> begin a new cycle where it starts off a certain level increases to a high intensity just like it does in eternity. A day will be a transit of intensity of light. Everybody on the earth will be a person of light. There will be no darkness at all allowed on the earth because righteousness will flourish and all that are on earth will be those of righteousness. Now we'll close with one more scripture. Turn to Isaiah... 13 verses 9 to 10 again talks about the day of the Lord being a day of darkness this darkness affects physically <clears throat> the creation Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. You're going to have periods of darkness over the creation where you won't be able to see any stars in the sky. There'll be wholesale periods. You won't see the sun. You won't see the moon. Blackness is going to cover everything during this period. The scripture tells us you're going to have periods in which the sun will go down at noonday. Blackness, darkness, night will cover the majority of the things of earth. But after that period, Light is going to dominate. God is going to return and set up his kingdom of light with the saints of light, which are going to be you. And darkness will cease to exist forever. <clears throat>